Hi, I'm Caroline Cooper and today on my channel I'm going to try and tackle a question which I know bothers a lot of us and that question is what causes phagophobia? What causes us to develop this mentally and often physically debilitating fear of swallowing and choking? You know, because for me personally, phagophobia really did just come on so suddenly. Um, at the time I couldn't even pinpoint at one point in my life where I'd actually feared or had a fear of swallowing and choking at all, nor could I recall even one single traumatic episode that had happened to me that might have triggered this fear, you know, not in the recent past, not in the distant past, I just couldn't think of one thing that could have brought this fear on. Of course, after I began to experience the physical or the psychosomatic symptoms that come with phagophobia, then of course I did start to consciously fear the act of swallowing, like massively fear the act of swallowing. But what I'm trying to say in a long roundabout way is that the physical symptoms, the choking episodes, the feeling like food isn't going down properly or it's getting stuck, the perceived inability to swallow, that sort of thing, those came first for me before I became consciously aware that I had a fear, if that makes sense. So the question I'm trying to answer is, how does that happen, not just to me, but to so many other people who get this? According to Freud's psychoanalytical theory of personality, the mind is made up of three parts, the, the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious mind. He likened these three levels to an iceberg, and so the conscious mind, the tip of the iceberg above the surface, is responsible for the thoughts and the fears that we're aware of. Um, I'm hungry, I'm going to go make a sandwich. I'm thirsty, I'm going to go make a drink. Swallowing is dangerous, I'm therefore afraid to swallow. Those are all examples of conscious thoughts. And of course, at some point in our journey with phagophobia, we're definitely going to experience that conscious fear or those conscious thoughts to do with swallowing and choking but initially if you like we're probably we're probably not going to develop this fear we're probably not going to wake up one day and consciously make the decision that swallowing is dangerous and therefore something to be feared and therefore develop a, a phobia i feel there's a lot more goes on beneath the surface if you like that causes this phobia the second part of the mind is just below the conscious or just below the surface and that part of the mind is called the subconscious mind. This is a storage point, if you like, for thoughts and memories that we might need to later recall or later bring up. So that the information in the subconscious mind is really quite easily accessible. We can quickly go down, access that information and bring it up into consciousness. That's why, for example, we're able to quick, quickly recall our phone number when someone asks for it. We're not consciously thinking about that number all the time but we've got it stored in our subconscious, so when we need it, we can just quickly go down and, and give them the number that they ask for without really thinking about it. Another example of how the subconscious mind works is, and I think this has probably happened to all of us at some point or another, but say you're about to leave the house and say you realise you've lost your keys. So for a while you're consciously thinking about finding them as you go around checking the house. Where did I put my keys? Are they in the car? No. Are they in my dressing bound account pocket? No. Are they on the kitchen bench? No. Are they on the telephone table? No. Example. So um, eventually you give up trying to find them and then you start to distract yourself with something else. You know, you might start to watch TV or do the ironing or whatever it is. And then when you've stopped, when you've stopped looking for them and when you've distracted yourself with that other thing, all of a sudden the answer to where your keys is pops into your head like seemingly out of nowhere so you might and you just suddenly know somehow that the keys are actually under the towel the kitchen towel or the tea towel on the bench or on the kitchen side you know and you just know for a fact they're there and sure enough when you check they are actually there so that's a perfect example um of the subconscious mind at work for instance, when you threw the towel over the keys on the bench, whenever you did that, you didn't consciously think, I'll need to remember this information for later when I'm trying to find my keys. It just kind of went over your head that you threw the towel down there. But somehow your subconscious had taken that information in and it stored it in case you do need to use that information later. And, you know, if that information has been recalled or has popped back into your head when you weren't thinking about it because 
even though you had given up on looking for your keys, um, your good old trusty subconscious was still working on it and, and found you the answer you were looking for. This can happen too around fears with swallowing and choking. So just like we couldn't remember throwing the towel over the keys, sometimes we can't remember some of the thoughts or the fears that we've had to do with swallowing or choking on a conscious level. And yet even though we haven't consciously registered them, they could have been registered subconsciously, if that makes sense, in case we ever need to use them again. In our case, when we try to swallow, perhaps our subconscious might send out danger signals or whatnot around what it perceives to be a dangerous act due to what we've subconsciously registered. I hope I'm making sense here. An example of this from my own personal experience is, and this is something that jumped out at me when I was doing some shadow work many years after first developing phagophobia. It was to do with a phone call that I'd had around the time of me first ever developing phagophobia. A phone call, like I said, that I hadn't been able to recall until many years later. Um, but that phone call was with my best friend. And during that phone call, she told me about her, how her little boy had almost choked on a jelly snake to the point that her husband at the time had had to literally put his hand in and, and drag it out. Um, anyway... It's an awful thing to have happen, happen to anyone and it's an awful thing to hear about as well, you know, but there was, there'd been no damage done, he was, he was all okay, nothing had happened, he hadn't actually choked and so I pretty much forgot all about it, you know, the conversation moved on, so I'd consciously forgotten about it, I should say, within moments um, and I hadn't remembered consciously that conversation until many years later. But when I look back though, when I look back at the events around me developing phagophobia like a map, those two events, my symptoms of phagophobia starting and that phone call were so close, you know, um, because two weeks after that phone call, my first ever physical symptom or psychosomatic symptom of phagophobia happened when I was also eating a jelly and that's just too close to be, you know, a coincidence. I don't know, but what happened was I was chewing up a jelly and I just went, I pushed it back to the back of my mouth, went to swallow it as normal. But what happened this time was that I had a freezing episode. So actually my swallowing reflex didn't kick in for a good five seconds, which was a very scary five seconds. So yeah, and so my phagophobia began. And like I said, it took me years to even remember that um, conversation and yes to figure out that those two things could have been linked. The last part of the mind is the unconscious part of the mind and this is the part of the mind that is right down there you know inaccessible right down at the muddy bottom and this is responsible for the reservoir of thoughts and feelings and urges and memory that are just completely outside of our conscious awareness um, I know it's just absolutely like mind-boggling <laughs> to think that we can have feelings and memories and all this other stuff that we just don't have a clue we actually have or that are stored within us but that's because this part of the mind is responsible for keeping those thoughts down there because it perceives those thoughts and things and fears as something that are just too unacceptable or just too unpleasant to deal with on a conscious level or something that would cause too much damage and too much anxiety did they make it through to the conscious as tangible thoughts. If you think about it right, and this is probably a bit of a dark example to be honest, but it's the one that's coming to my head. But if you think about adults who were abused as children and you hear about them coming forwards 20, 30 years after their abuse because they only then remember it happening to them, you know, throughout those 20, 30 years they have absolutely no memory of it whatsoever and then one day they suddenly start to have those memories after working with a psychologist or doing shadow work or what have you. That's an example of, of the unconscious mind keeping those, those memories and thoughts down there because it, it perceives them as too difficult to deal with on a conscious level. And for those of us who suffer with phagophobia and aren't able to recall a conscious Fear, fearful thought that we've had around swallowing or can't remember something at the time that could have been stored in our subconscious and um, for those of us like that then the fear we've developed has probably been registered as an unconscious fear um, and something that we might not ever be able to recall again. This unconscious fear could have been triggered by something 
anything, you know, but it could be something so small and minute, um, something such as flicking through the channels on TV one day and suddenly catching like a glimpse or a screenshot view of someone choking or, you know, scrolling through your newsfeed and just catching a quick second of, um, of a story or a warning about choking or something like that. That unconscious thought is just as powerful it's very powerful, I should say, even though it's something such a tiny trigger. If that unconscious fear is registered, it can it can really start to wreak havoc on the body. If you like, just like the bottom of that iceberg can still do damage to the ship sailing towards it, even though the ship can't see it or doesn't know it's there, it can still do damage, right? So yeah, what I'm trying to explain, and I'm really not sure that I've done a very clear job of trying to do that. But what I'm trying to get across is that if you do find yourself in the position that I was in, experiencing all of these physical scary symptoms of phagophobia, you know, and you're being told that these swallowing problems and whatnot are due to a fear that you have of swallowing and choking, um, but you just can't understand how when you've never actually had a fear of swallowing and choking before now or before all of these problems started, I know, I get it, I understand, it happened to me too. Um, and I just want to reassure you that sometimes we can register of fears in a subconscious and even in an unconscious way or on an unconscious level. So we might not ever be aware that they were ever in us until they become conscious or until they become triggered and become action, if you like. So yeah, so I hope this video has been useful to you or of benefit to you in some way. And yeah, if you are going through all of that, then I know it's hard, but just try to accept, try not to question this fear anymore. Just try to accept that it's in you. However it got there, it was in you at one point. That's why you're going through this. And now you're aware of that. Now you can put 100% into your recovery and into into being becoming better and, and beating this you know because you, you will one day I have hope that you will I, I overcome it and I have hope that you can too but I do know how awful it is yeah take care have the best day you can have and see you next time